but the government announces historic new women's health guidelines today. The Department of Health and Human Services is requiring insurance companies to cover women's preventative services, including birth control, for the first time ever. Here's CBS News correspondent Michelle Miller. For the tens of millions of American women who use contraception, birth control will now essentially be free because of new government guidelines requiring insurance companies to not only cover the cost, but to eliminate co-pays and deductibles. That was welcome news to the women we spoke to. Sometimes $20 a month can definitely be hard to scrape together. It is very, very expensive, and I think that that's one of the problems, especially for younger women who really can't afford it. Birth control has been controversial in the United States from the moment Margaret Sanger opened up the country's first family planning clinic in 1916 and was promptly sent to prison for it. While many have hailed contraception as the best way to prevent unwanted pregnancies, others argue that abstinence education is the way to go. In a statement, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops opposed the new guidelines, saying pregnancy is not a disease and fertility is not a pathological condition to be suppressed by any means technically possible. But women's rights advocates say free access to birth control can significantly reduce the number of unplanned pregnancies. The number of children we have determines how many we need to educate, how many we can employ, the social and economic outcomes of contraception are critical. The new rules would affect insurance plans beginning August 2012. Michelle Miller, CBS News, New York. And joining us now from the White House is Stephanie Cutter, a deputy senior advisor to President Obama. Ms. Cutter, good morning. Good morning. It's a major announcement. What are the preventative services that are included on this list? Uh, the, well, today is an important step forward for women's health. Uh, as, a re, as a result of the Affordable Care Act, the new health reform law, insurance companies have to provide preventive care with no out-of-pocket out costs. Uh, well, there was never any uh, guidelines for women's health to make sure that they stay healthy throughout the course of their lives. Today, that's no longer the case. We do have a set of recommended preventive services for women. There are things covered like treatment for gestational diabetes to keep uh, mothers and their children healthy, uh, well woman visits to treat women uh, for the things that are unique about their health needs, yeah. and of course contraception, uh, which uh, was part of your piece just a second ago. Yeah, there look, are a nor or, go I'm, ahead. I'm sorry, but I just want to back to contraception. I want to talk about that. You know, there are groups that, that don't agree with contraception being advocated right. by the government. Why? Why do you believe? that uh, what do you say to those who believe that abstinence is still the best preventative measure? Well this isn't about abstinence, abstinence and this is not about uh, um, preventing unwanted pregnancies, this is about women's health. Uh, there are known benefits uh, based on the science, based on uh, the experts, based on the independent studies of the Ind Institute of Medicine uh, that keep women healthy if you lower the cost of contraceptive services. These are FDA approved contraceptive services. It helps with uh, keeping women healthy. It helps with uh, lowering uh, the rates of low birth weight, uh, lowering premature births, and helping women with chronic conditions uh, have children in a healthy way. Yeah, why did the administration find it crucial to have a list like this uh, with women's health care needs at this point? Uh, well, according to the law, uh, we were uh, charged with developing a set of recommended preventive services. Uh, a year ago, uh, the Department of Health and Human Services directed the Independent Institute of Medicine to help us uh, develop those recommended services. Uh, and today, uh, they go into effect. One year from today, uh, insurance companies, private insurance companies, have to provide these services with no out-of-pocket costs. Many of these benefits uh, that we're announcing today are already part of uh, large private health care plans, employer plans. And they're part of uh, federal health care benefits. Members of Congress have these benefits. Now they're going to be available to all women. All right. Stephanie Cutter, thank you very much for taking the time this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you.